Hello and welcome if you're just joining us here for the Southern Final for 2018 here in Seven Oaks, where we have the Werewolves of London facing off against London QC. Both looking to walk away with this gold medal after this, which I think is going to be a very heated match indeed. Both teams are uh, finishing out of their pools uh, right at the top, um, dominating throughout pool stage on day one. And both had dominant performances across the board today in the bracket play. Both teams have already qualified for the EQT, uh, the EQC qualifier tournament, and they are looking now to the more important gold for regionals. So we know now after Southampton took the gold last year, we're going to have a new Southern champion for 2018. Will it be London QC, the new team formed for this year, or will it be Wells of London after walking away with two silvers for the past two years? Stay tuned here as we have the starting sixes coming up, so don't go anywhere. Starting six is lining up now for Werewolves of London. Uh, Alex Harrison looking to go for Quaffle. Pretty standard for this tournament so far. Um, has been pretty successful as well. I would, would nervously say he's got 100% win rate uh, going for the Quaffle. Uh, beside him there is Gemma Thrip looking to put in that massive hit. Or oh, that's other option if he does get the ball. Uh, beating pair from Oxford's. Older times, Jan Mikawaya Jack and Alice Walker, number nine. Luke Twist stepping onto pitch as well in a white headband, looking to help his team take that all important gold. LQC still yet to select a starting lineup, um, but Werewolves' last player is yet to step on. LQC making their way onto pitch. Bexlow, number 13, and number 59, Tom Stevens, the captain and founder of LQC, making his way on. Let us know if you're listening on the live stream. Listen live, mate. Listen live. Who you are supporting, unfortunately, you may have some hecklers uh, caught up on the live stream as well. But we'll ignore the crotchety old man in front of me here. Aaron Veal, number 14, last player to step on for Wales of London. Willie looks like he's starting in the green. Has been a massive, massive pickup for Wales of London this season. Um, is the only starter from the winning Southampton squad uh, after Wales of London have picked up many, many SQC players, including myself. Um, LQC yeah, now with their starting lineup. Ben Malpass alongside Tom Stevens, Lewis Boast, Seb Waters, and Karina Werner. Spot on. Thank you for support on the live stream. It's always good to hear from you. Uh, let us know where you are watching from today on the live stream. Here we're about to get underway of the final for Southern Cup 2018. Wales London versus LQC. Game is going to be close. Let us know what your predictions are on the live stream. Who do you think is going to be walking away with gold at the end of this game today? Yeah! 
final ready is called for both teams. And we're underway here at the final at Southern. Alex Harrison just missing the ball. Tom Stephen gets it, but Luke Twist picking up, managing to get the bludger for Wales of London's first offence. Getting control as well. Wales setting themselves up in a really good position already early on in this game. Aaron Veal looking for an opportunity. Offloads to Twist. Twist drives, shoots just over the top. Harrison can't pick it up. LKC defend magnificently there. Seb Waters moving up in the green headband there, controlling the pitch. Both teams using this kind of box formation now that we're seeing more and more on this offense. Having that short pass off, that mouth pass in that position, just missing that beat. Bexo getting it, but being wrapped up by Veal. Veal brings her down. And another strong defense there. Advantage though, uh, I believe that is Dave Godden fist up. Advantage to Wells of London. Nothing called currently. Wolves continue on moving upwards and still maintaining control. Wells of London looking for an opportunity. Aaron Veal looks off loads to twist. Skirts around, shoots. Thinks he gets it in, but the ref says no. He'll be disappointed with that one. Loud support from the Werewolves bench there as LQC set up this next offence. Seb Waters once again with ball in hand. Malpass just to his left, looking for that little offload. Stevens trying to find some space out the back end. Trying to look around, skirt around, get an opportunity for them. 0-0 currently here in this early stage of this final of Southern. Long shot over to Bexlow, throws it over but just wide on that shot. Thrown over, out of bounds, turnover to Wells. Wells set up once again and another offence that ends in a no goal. As Walker slowly moving up, first time Wells are without control. Let's see if they can turn around the offence. Veal has no bludgers, skirts around one, goes to the shot, throws it in. It's the first goal of the game. Aaron Veal putting the points on the board for Werewolves. But Seb Water, famous for countering very quickly. His team's up with him. A bit of argy-bargy on the ball there. Bex low versus Gem Thrip. A flag has been thrown. That could be a back tackle there on Werewolves. <laughs> it's a yellow card, Gemma Flip there. Illegal contact, contact from behind. Should be disappointed with that ball. Will be reset to LQC to let them continue with the offense. One player down now. Jan Mikawajak with the ball in hand though. Could be ready to go. Bexlow steps up, resets ball to Seb Waters. Seb Waters moves. Beat is trying to find him some space. Seb Waters skirts around, throws it over to Malpass. Malpass slaps it in. They return the goal. It is 10-10 here in the final. Wells don't go for the fast break. They're slowly waiting. Jan Mikawajak, a little bit of battling in the beta game there. Jan continues. Veal goes. He's got the pace on him. Seb goes for the spin. Doesn't quite make the tackle. Throws it over. Looks like a goal. Goal is given. 20-10 to Werewolves of London. Seb Waters returning once again on the offense. Another opportunity. Jacopo looking for it. Malpass throwing just over the top. Stevens can't pick it up after the miss shot. Werewolves 
not looking for the fast break. Slowing down the game. Aaron Veal controlling the pace of the game. Know exactly how fast he wants to run it. Mouth guards never in properly on that boy. Um, just doesn't think... Yeah, just thinks that he can get away with it. Also joined here now in the commentary box by Jay Holmes. Giving his two cents. Jay, how are you doing? I'm loving life, Tommy. Loving life. Visiting here from Raptors. Spying on the two potential teams he's going to be facing. Um, finding out, getting all the good goss. Yeah, uh, been a fantastic game so far. Properly competitive for all the right reasons. That's exactly what you want. Uh, that is exactly what you want. I think a lot of the, the games just in the past couple of months have been competitive for maybe the wrong reasons, but this one... It's just some fantastic play and some stifling defense. What's nice, it's not only smart, but it's also nice physical and offensive as well. So you see some smart plays that's a little bit too slow for maybe my liking. Um, and they're just waiting. Yanzik has the long throw. Doesn't even beat him, just knocks it out of his hand. And Veer looking to counter again. Pops oh, it over, but blocked. Block. Great block. What a block there. I think the... the Thing that is making LQC the most deadly is a lot of teams got the counter attack on, but theirs is just so hard to stop. Like you can recognise it happening, you can notice it happening, but being able to stop the the septum mouth pass combination it is just so difficult. Totally the agree. Are so quick. It's a and tried and tested formula. Exactly those two. Exactly. Why break the winning formula? So Waters getting Ooh. the offload just before I think the beat came in. Well, it's a I turnover anyway. Something that may be affecting the higher level players, you saw it a bit at Northern and you see it at Southern, is you have a lot of games where the competition isn't the level you expect. And then when you do have the pressure and the competition, it can throw you off your game. You're just not used. Definitely. But I think that is not the case here. Uh, I, I think you, you could argue that maybe both teams aren't have had to switch on a lot quicker than they'd like. Yeah. I don't think either team is playing the game on their terms just yet because they're, they're actually feeling out competition that is like for like in every position. There's no bad player on the pitch. There's no weak link you can exploit. And I think that can really take uh, a mindset change when you've spent most of the day where that isn't the case. Fantastic take by Twist there. Twist there looking for the fast break. Could have had it. It was going to be a oh, two on two, plucked. but plucked from the air, seen every day. Yeah. Not enough pace on that ball there. Not enough Sadly pace on that ball. Not. Steven's lurking behind the hoops. He's always there. He's always there. It's never I not. Think. Using uh, Waters and Malpass as, as the key ball handlers. I think a lot of people sleep on Malpass's ability to handle the ball. They see him primarily as a receiver. Yeah. But a, a very smart player and very, very able with the ball in his hands. Sam Waters is going to go Float. himself. Oh, Float. great block there by Norton. I'm feeling the shots oh. in this one. You got to get that guaranteed shot in, or someone's going to be blocking it on both teams. Yeah, it, it is that sort of stifling defense. You can't afford the, the floaty, soft shots. You, you, you're going to have to rocket it in. We, we've got a, a foul called. Yellow card for Tom Steele. I believe that's from contact from behind. Just not what you want in the final. No, but, but I think this is the sort of goes where you have to take risks like that. Without a doubt, and you can see the passion and the tenacity yeah. in these teams. Like you, you saw it with James Fowl, you see it with Tom there. If you don't take those 60, 40, 50, 50 chances, you are going to let a goal in. And sometimes totally it's agree. better to take the card and take the risk than let the goal away. And whilst it is a card and now a turnover, it's in the Werewolves half and LQC still retain control. So not in for a card. I think it's the best possible scenario they could be in currently. I think as well, we're at the point now where the elite teams can compensate for being a chaser down. Like you can just play a different type of zone defense. Yeah. But when you're a beater down at this level, th that's the thing that starts to cripple you. And as I say, Great that's take. a fantastic goal. But However, there is an injury on pitch. Which I think is to be expected at this level. It is a full contact game. Um, but it, it is, is. It's always unfortunate to see a player. And you down. never want to see it. Uh, we'll move away from that for now. Uh, whilst we're checking out that injury and seeing what that will be a result as. So, the million dollar question. Mm. Who is your money on? Who is my money on? So, the one game that we've seen these team two, two teams play against each other already is at Battle Royale. Uh, LQC taking that victory there. LQC but taking every victory at Battle Royale. Incredibly true. impressive play. Um, however, in my unbiased opinion... You're a completely unbiased opinion. Uh, as the captain for Werewolves of London seconds, uh, I'm backing Werewolves of London first on this one. I think that they... I don't know, it's something about them and the th something about the drive uh, of... 
walking away with a silver medal for two years in a row now, narrowly losing it out. They don't want a third year with that silver medal. And between these, I think you're looking for the fine, fine details now. And I think a psychological advantage might be all it takes in this game. I do think we're at the point now where the first 18 minutes have sort of stopped mattering when it comes to this sort of high totally. level play. And we do just want to see what teams do in snitch on pitch. I think, I'd, I personally like maybe an overtime for this one. I can see it happening. Overtime's becoming more common now as teams are really struggling to pull away. Taking a four goal lead and then shutting the other team out as you continue to score is getting harder and harder and harder to do. Totally, and if that's going to happen, I can see LQC being up on Quaffle, but Wales of London taking the snitch to take that to overtime. Fun fact for you, for uh, end of day one, in four games, Trevor, <laughs> Jordan, Army, Jeffrey, is that? Facebook aficionado. Aficionado. <laughs> Garvey, Garvey. I'm so sorry, Trevor. Um, uh, he uh, managed to, in four games, his total time catching a snitch was one minute and 20. I do think we're, we're at the point now where, where Jordan is not just the best seeker here, he's the best seeker in the UK at the moment. I think that's, so. That's not um, to say that won't change as the season goes on. Definitely. But at this moment in time, he really is catching the snitches. And, and like a phenomenal chaser as well. Like Jordan really is a, a complete athlete. And that's that's what you want on a team like Werewolves and a team like LQC. I think a lot of teams, when they go to EQT, the ones that have just scraped by to EQT, are really, really going to have a rude awakening when they get there. And the likes of Raptors, Megalodons, LQC, Wells, there is no easy one. Like, it's a slog every single game. We it saw is. the effort these teams are putting in against against the top of the mid tier yeah and i think that they it's going to be a rude awakening sadly when we get to that i <laughs> think EQT to be honest games. the eight teams that are going to be sent to div one and div two at eqc they're going to be eight strong teams going to represent the uk which is so nice to have um across the board really strong teams what? but then the flip side is on one end you've got your lqc's your wells your Raptors. on the other you've got you've got your baths and i i am concerned this true. is not to take away from baths but the stats show university teams really don't have the best of luck against the more experienced, the more tactically nuanced community teams. That is true. And the question on everyone's minds, Jay, how's the North going to do now? Now that you've seen the Southern players, having played at the North yourself, what do you think is going to happen to the North at EQT? I am slightly concerned for the North at EQT. I, I think it's, it's an interesting comparison between the North and the South. So that, the base level for a Southern player it is much higher than at the North. And mm. So even, uh, to, to speak bluntly, the worst players at Southern are better than the worst players at North. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I think some of the mid-tier Northern teams are much better than the mid-tier Southern teams. Uh, and I, I do think it's a mentality change. I think we've seen... Uh, over the years for Quidditch, the North, due to weather conditions, which is obviously changing now, always plays a drive-heavy sort of game. Mm. The South... A bit more the, rugged. A <laughs> bit, bit more parsy-parsy. A little less argy bargy A little less argy bargy uh, more parsy-parsy. Uh, think, ha have we a game where it is a Northern team versus a Southern team? Not your... Uh, luckily, uh, Karina for Wells coming off now. It's good to see there. Good to see. It looks like there's going to be no serious injury, which is obviously fantastic. Nice to see someone walking yeah. away. Um, but I, I do think now, uh, if a northern team plays a southern team, if we've got those lovely dry conditions and it's mid-tier, I'm taking the southern team. If it's rocking it down with rain, I'm looking at the north going, let's tuck it and run. Edinburgh could be looking for that Div 1 spot. Edinburgh did look incredibly strong. And we've got a card there for Lewis, Lewis Boast. Boast. Loose Cannon Boasts, they call him on LQC. High contact. High contact. High contact. Once, as we were saying earlier, sometimes you've got to take the yeah. risk. And it's expected to see cards in a final. I don't think we've yeah. ever had a final where there aren't cards. A, um, lot, of, a lot of sports shows, when you get uh, to the uh, high level, yeah. every player, especially yeah. captains, studies show captains are always playing by the fringe of the rules, yeah. always pushing it as far as they can, because that can be your edge in these games. Obviously, LQC, a beater down now, are going to, to struggle a little bit, but they're going to play a very slow slow offense finds Trevet. George Whiting transfer from uh, Bristol oh, good good footwork there by Trevet, keeping the, the ball safe only beater now on pitch for LQC Resets reset used, there. used by LQC Resets used to Malpass Malpass is so fluid with the passing effortless now we're looking at the Warwick 
golden trio now. I, I mean, why would you change your winning formula? Uh, like, yeah. it's worked at Warwick. You're now coming to LQC where you can, you don't choose, you build the pieces you want around yeah. you. You're choosing the pieces that you want. Is the goal given there? I believe goal, goal, is, goal is given. Is given. Goal is um, given. Most won't be on just yet. That was a goal for LQC whilst a beat it down. LQC going to take some time giving the ball back to Werewolves there. Ball back in play. We're at 3 2 to Werewolves. And Werewolves immediately. Veal goes again, back. gets around, shirt Flips grab it. there. Oh, Floats it over. Will that be an advantage? Oh, oh Seb Waters. No, there. Seb Fantastic Waters. No advantage reach. given for the shirt grab there. Um, yeah, going back. So, as you were saying, building on teams. So, you have that winning trio already from Warwick. And LQC is. A very Warwick-esque, I'd say, but they're now filling the gaps with, with the strong... The likes of Stevens, the like of Frank. Also, you say the Golden Trio, you've still got your your John, your 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 tall John Teed. Mm. You've still got your Jacopo there. That's like, true. You're, you're taking the, the what made Warwick excellent and giving it Tom Stevens, giving it Frankie, you know, building up with these parts, giving it Karina, yeah. who obviously was... And whilst he's injured at the moment, but Kayla oh, Pegman, but Werewolves trying to answer that, just goes over the it's top for Aaron. Aaron disappointed oh, with that one there. Oh, a bit, a bit dubious there from Ed, the captain of Werewolves. As we said, you've got to play by the fringe Very of the oi rules. Oi. You know, when the game's on the line, you've got to be in your prime. That's exactly. what they always say, Tommy. That's what they, they always say. say. <laughs> It's interesting to say, uh, looking at the cards as well, you're saying at the very high level, you're looking at quite a few cards. You're also looking at a lot of cards in the bottom level. The biggest difference, the bottom level have no idea that they're playing <laughs> right at the seat of their pants. Um, and the top, they know they they're doing it. it. They love it. We've got Chris Thomas Whoa. now. Oh, a little height rolls out. Oh, absolutely fine. Absolutely. Chris Thomas with an absolute rifle of a beat there. Sadly turning over bludger control. Here we go. Waters pass one, pass two. Dunks Big it in. Big dunk there. Big dunk. A lot of power. A lot of, lot of movement with Seb. They're all really powerful, quick movement. It is. And it's nice to see Seb Waters maybe in previous seasons not a huge fan of the drive himself. Likes to look for the offload instead. But now we're looking at this season, loving the drive. It's, Wants it's, to go through. It's the agility, isn't it? Yeah. Like, I think Quidditch is still at that point where... We, we've caught up a lot, but our tackling still a lot further behind than we'd like it to be. Um, well, you, watch, you watch a rugby game, very rarely does a player go for a one-on-one -on -one and that is it. You're always doubling up, you're always definitely. getting them all in. And I think Quidditch is the same. Try, trying to tackle a player one-on-one, -on -one, especially with one arm, is just so difficult there. Ooh, not oh, reset used, not foot was just before. Used, yeah. And Seb Walters as well, not a huge guy, not massive, no, so just playing to his great strengths. Great take there by Ville. Back to Norton. I think Norton's going to try and open himself up for the shot. Here. I think so as well. He's looking for it. Again, Chris, a man with a cannon on his Chris arm. Thomas is looking for the lane. Tash is probably going to pick the hoop that Norton wants to go behind. Ed Veal Norton on. That is that is your a sharp Powerful shooters. combo. Sharp they can all shoot really well, oh, no matter who the here ball is go. in. In we go. Will he look for it? Looks for it. it. Fires it just over. Unlucky there. Right decision there. True. Right decision. I think the shooting game is something we've really seen develop over the last year and a half, two years. Uh, I wonder who gave them those ideas. But it's something that's nice to see opposed to the northern rough and tumble style of play. Yeah. A bit more finesse. LQC looking to answer. Ooh, one great nice block. block. Chris Thomas again wants to go back in. Oh, but oh, a fantastic a block step. by Thomas. Chris, looking for the looked press. like he struggled with his decision making there. LQC playing such a box to box fluid game. You can't keep up. What a fantastic Good goal, goal from LQC there. 4-3. LQC take the lead for the first time in this yeah. game. And you know... Ed Brett calling timeout. Smart decision. Wise decision. Wise decision. Time goes Go get an update. We're at the 12 minute mark now of the final. The score's at four goals to three in LQC's favours. As we see with many finals these days, they're either scoring shotgun, shotgun, blow by blows, or you keep the score lovely and low, you stay peaceful. Exactly. Whilst you're away there, Jay, you just missed a bit of an argument between Werewolves Bench and some of the LQC players. Alex Greenhouse not happy with the lack of the reset from LQC is wanting the ball back a bit faster than for them, but they don't indeed. Uh, All it says is, is the official's job to return that ball. It is. They do not need to pass it back to them. Now, we, you can argue that sportspersonship and gamespersonship dictate you should give it back. But 
at this level, would you rather be known as the great sports person who came second, or would you rather be known as the elite player who came first? That's you don't you want my answer, answer Jay, because I think we'll have two very different answers here. <laughs> I, I think in a game like this, you have to ask yourself, if you're at EQC, you go there for are the... 10 seconds on the clock. Are you going to rocket that ball back to Albert as quick as you knee? can? Or are you going to P-roll it to him and say, excuse moi <laughs> I, I do apologise. I think you might be right there, Jay. You know, American football, you run the clock out. Basketball, you dribble the clock out. You get any advantage you can. And people might not like that, but that's how the game is played. That's winning. <laughs> that's winning. I think we might see the return of Tom Stevens soon. I think so. I think so. What do we think they were saying in that huddle? Good question. Well, I think... Malpass is getting his Nando's order sorted, if you ask me. I totally agree. (laughs) So, I think, uh, on a more serious note, I think Wales and London are looking uh, more to say, let's not start taking the risks now as such. Let's look to the guaranteed goals as we're starting to get into the later stages. You've got to think about possession now. We need to keep the ball in our hands. Chris Thomas, though, clearing up. A bit of a throwaway there. Oh, but Seb Waters wants that fast break. He's got the pace He's on him, looking for Trevet. Throws oh, it. Oh, hi! Lucky, risk. unlucky. Big risk to take then. I think, though, maybe is British Quidditch too conservative? With the new Team UK structure that I believe the coaches are implementing, they're looking at taking a few more risks. And sometimes you've got to take the risk. I think. You'd... Would you rather sit and lose by 30 or try and lose by 70? It's I... another question you've got to try and ask yourself. I think another goal there. It's an by interesting point to raise there. And I totally agree. I think that in the last two, three years... Excuse me, sir, was that not a goal? There we go. We are so afraid to give the ball away to the other team. Yep. We say, and I, we're all guilty of it. We sit in a huddle and we say, we'll sit in a timeout, we'll sit in a huddle before the game, and we say, we just want to keep the ball in our hands. Let's not give it away to them. Let's get the goal and then have it to them. But if it's if it's a draw, we're at 4-4 at the moment. It doesn't matter. Yeah, you start risking. Get those goals. Oh, great twist. Oh, Ooh, a lucky Bit shot. of a twist from Steve- twist. <laughs> Stevens now. Conservative, conservative on the ball, wise move. Seb Waters yet we've to sub to, out. We've got to change now, Trevet for Gavet. Gavet and Trevet, <laughs> it's almost like they planned it. Gavet, uh, a France import, I believe, fantastic. Boast, really having a good game. Unlucky, Seb, Seb struggling with his passing. I think that maybe is that pressure? Seb, one of, well, arguably the best ball handler in the country. Ooh, almost using the reset, say. drifting it over to Stevens. Stevens back again. It's that typical box formation we're seeing so much more of these days. So you were talking about earlier of the... Oh, Twist getting stuck in. Ooh, it's a reset to Waters, Just reset used. Drift it over straight to the hands of Greenhouse. Oh, Greenhouse, he might Here have a free go. run. It's Stevens versus oh, Greenhouse. Big, big hit! Strip the ball! Strip the ball there! Fantastic. Brilliant what you want to see. This is the final you want to see. The physicality that both teams are bringing is spot on. This is high level Quidditch. Tom Stevens, in the words of the internet, an absolute unit. Unit. A A unit. Great strip of the ball there. Fantastic. I know because I teach them it. Team UK have been working on that in training. Sometimes you can't flatten the person, but if you can force that fumble, that is the difference. That's what can create goals like that. And that was textbook there from Tom Fantastic. Again, that is just working to your strengths. You might not be the biggest guy, the biggest gal, the biggest non-binary. Oh, it's getting a bit cheeky down there. A little bit. Greenhouse, notorious for playing right on the edge of the line. Is he doing it again here? Um, Here we go now. Both teams having a chance to have a little bit of chat and a set up. Gavet going deep. So we were talking about the three gentlemen on Wales of London last time. They're all danger with the ball in their hands. Well, we're looking at LQC <laughs> now with Seb Waters, Tom Stevens and Gavet all dangerous oh. in with Whoa. the ball in their hands. And it's Prime example, but beat before. before. Fantastic reactions from Anjit there to react to that pass. I don't think there are many beaters that could recognise that play and make that beat in that time. Fantastic. Play. Again, another Southern uh, current standing champion. He wants yeah. to hold on to that gold. I think Anjit is one of the most passionate players I think I've ever met. Without a doubt. He he breathes. And that's for coming the from game. Jay Holmes. Yeah, that's coming from me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Ed Brett with a fancy 
Phil Wakes trying to stay in there. Could be on for a press. Oh, oh throwing it him to Ed's. Into I think the Santana. snitch is coming on soon now. This is where the game gets exciting. Oh, it's a Bidwell playing on the edge of the rules. Jack Latoy, our snitch for today. Bidwell making sure he's been, being clear to the ref. He's out of the game. I'm not being interacted with. But what's the call going to be? Jay, you saw it more than I did. I, I mean, that's exactly the same thing I would have done in that situation. Uh, I think Bid Bidwell knew what he was doing. I think in every, any high level athlete or Quidditch players going to be doing the same. I do think as well, you get to the point, and I mean this is no disrespect to Simon, Simon might not be able to compete physically with the likes of Stevens, but mentally he knows all the tricks. Without a doubt, I think every trick of the trade there is. One of the smartest minds in Quidditch, yeah. still consistently, and he has been for years. And we've got... Tej versus who I believe Jordan Garvey. Trevor, as he's more <laughs> known as Jordan, Jordan. Do you know why? Because I respect Quidditch players. I attempted earlier, Trev, and I got it completely wrong. Jonathan Purvis, two of the best, if not the two best seekers in the country, going head to head. <laughs> What do you say? Who, Jonathan Poe is asking who Callum Lake is. Who's Callum That's Lake? That's a smack talk now. We'll have a hard cut to the end of this game. And we'll see if it's right. Gavette with a the basketball there. Slightly missing. Ed Brett. Ed Brett trying to get a tackle. giving him a Believes cheeky the ball. go. Stevens. And there's the goal. So that contact there, I think is totally legal. Not aware that the ball is out of his hands. And uh, you are allowed to complete a tackle. That's you can. That's the way I look at it. You go for it. That's what we don't see enough of exactly. at the lower levels, is as someone passes off, it's just a little hug. I want the completed tackle. Let them know you're there. With people giving you warnings saying, ball out already, if you're already through that dive and your legs are coming off it's into more the dangerous ground, to try and go if backwards. I try and back off now, yeah. someone's getting hurt. So we've got Brett now. Werewolves going to start playing the more conservative game. Without a doubt. They're going to be moving that box offence, as you can see. Keeping that shape. It's moving into a bit of a diamond, but it's keeping that shape again. They've uh, been drilling and drilling and drilling recently. You see you get one more, and Jordan catches. It's overtime. And that's why I'm here. That's why that's we're what here. I'm We could be correct on those predictions earlier today. Ooh, Good take. Oh, Just missing. Just getting on the hoop. That is unfortunate. Stevens, he wants to go. Oh, we look oh fantastic tackle from Ben, ben Harney. Honey there. Really, that is clutch right there. That is when clutch. The game is on the line. You've got to make those hits. However, LQC with control here. Trevor, really close. Oh. Oh, Curtis bringing him to the ground. That looked close. And the opportunity. His... He has to take it if you ask me. You've got I to agree. Go for He's it. going. Looks off though. Gets the off though. Oh, dear. Just a the, bit of a slip. He's just got to fight for that. Oh, does. Move. Spins. Come on. Could this go for the shot. The line. Oh. Keeps going. Keeps going. Keeps, keeps going. going. Veal contesting for the ball. Theo Baldwin Evans on now. Big. The resident big. monster truck. Trevor with the catch. Oh. Trevor may have caught to take the win. Our oh, Wales of London, have they beaten have their they second street? Been, they've been chasing this ghost for years. And have they, they might got have it? Finally done it. The score is 60 to 40. LQC. And a LQC. catch. A catch. 70 star 40. Uh, 70 star 60. 60. That is a score of a final a lot of you want to see. Seconds getting ready, thinking the catch is good. I also. A lot of the crowd thinking the catch is good. I know I'm the commentator here, but I will also be joining that second team running on as well. Uh, if this is good. And it's, and it's good. good. And it's good. Fantastic play there. Really great stuff from both teams. I think you could argue LQC played the better style of play, but at the end of the day, it doesn't matter who you think deserved to win. It doesn't matter who you think was the better team. The only thing that matters is the person that does win. Putting the points on the board and playing clinically. Okay, as we can see now, both teams showing some great sportsmanship. Shaking hands. Uh, I've been Jay Holmes, joined by Tommy Morgan, and Werewolves of London are finally your Southern Cup champions. Congratulations to them. So, Jay, any closing thoughts? 
for this game. I'm incredibly excited to see EQT and EQC. This is going to be big, and I think we're going to see some big changes in UK Quidditch for this season. This will be the most successful year or two years UK Quidditch has ever seen. I totally Easily. agree with that. Easily. And on that bombshell. On that shock hot take. I think it's time for us to sign off. I've been Tommy Morgan. I've been Jay Holmes. Thank you very much.